Chicken care experts hate this trick. Shell access to the appliance. Okay, so today I said we force our way to the shell, but actually <laughs> it's not really forcing, it's very simple. It's a feature meant to be, so it's not a security issue, but uh, you can get shell access yeah. and it's quite to easy. the site. It's, it's very easy and it can be useful. You just need to be aware that what you're doing, uh, but you can automate things by that way. You can install custom software on the site and so on. So let's have a look. Let's have a look, right. So we already know our site from the previous videos. We go to the site management. There's our sites. And I think we're just going to have a look at the first site we created, my site. And now we want to enable shell access. Um, so here we need the option enable login via SSH. That's the first point. Most of you guys probably know SSH, so I'm not going to explain what that technology is and does. Um, and of course, we need to give a password to access. At least initially, later yeah. we can set up SSH without password with a normal, normal uh, way to do it, and then we can disable the password here. For right. Security. Reasons. Yeah. Yeah. But for getting started, of course, we need some some first access. So we have a password, and I think that's it. If we save, and if you know the IP address, and if you haven't forgotten the password. Right, we need to restart the site. Maybe we should note that here. Okay. But again, we are asked, so we can confirm that. That takes a few seconds to stop the site, configure it, and restart it. And then we can have a look at the actual shell access. OK, so let's go. I'm just going to switch over to the. So you, you are working on a Linux system, so we don't need PuTTY or something. If you're working with Windows, you probably will use PuTTY for remote SSH access. Right. So don't yeah. be confused. This is a Linux system, so we just use the command line SSH tool. Um, important is the username is the name of the site, and the IP address is that of the appliance, of course. Right. So I connected to the system. Now we are asked for the password, which I just said, and that's it. We're in. That's it. So now you have the same uh, uh, structure as as is usual in CheckMK instances. We have an um, article in the user manual where the, the file system structure is explained a bit. We have the local structure where you can develop your own check plugins uh, and so on. So uh, we have linked the according manual article in the video description. So have fun on the shell. Don't destroy anything. I mean, it's not root access, so you, you can't uh, mix up the firmware of the appliance itself. You just can destroy your site, basically. <laughs> destroy your site, <laughs> but that's something you also can do if you don't use an appliance. Right. So you have full access. Usually you don't need it, but there are some situations where it can be useful. Yeah, use um, the shell responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so but let's go to one level further. I want, of course, I want root access. All right, we can do that too. Um, so to gain root access, we need to get back to the appliance console one more time. Um, so here we are back on the console of the virtual appliance. For the physical appliance, that would be looks um, exactly a monitor. Yeah. Right, it looks the same. You just need the monitor and keyboard once again. Or a KVM switch. Right, depending on the technology you use. Um, and now we enter the configuration menu with F1 again. And here we have the option to gain root access number yeah. five don't mix it up with console access we come to that later right so it's root access yeah we need to choose to enable root access and in the next step we are asked for a password and that's that that's it so should work immediately shouldn't it right no reboot required that's good right we are just moving over to a terminal window let me just maximize the window and increase the font size here a little, just so we can see, better see what is yeah, going okay. on. So now should work, shouldn't it? Right. Now we want to log in as root. Don't try this at home. <laughs> we are asked for our password. That sounds fair. 
And we are in. And it's basically the same screen as before, but in this case, you can see on the left side, um, we are logged in as root. That means we have full control of the device. All right, so now that we have root access, what do you want to do, Matthias? I think before we do any actual change here, we need to speak about the consequences of fiddling around with, with the files here. So, um, of course, you should be uh, very careful what you're doing, but uh, the appliance is structured in a very clean way. So the actual firmware is uh, mounted in a read-only file system, and we have a layered file system here. So the complete rule file system uh, is actually living in slash ro. If you can, can uh, if you can have a look at slash ro, this is the actual firmware. It's read-only. You cannot change anything here, and this file system is mirrored into the rule file system. And on top of that is a second file system called slash rw. RW stands for read-write. So all files that are modified from the original firmware are located here. Right. So the question is, why would you want to modify something? For example, in the appliance uh, configuration, we added DNS servers to the etc resolve conf file. Uh, so that file needs to be changed, and the appliance does it in a way that it copies the original file to slash RW and changes it there. And the operating system has a layered file system where the changed file appears at the right place in the root file system. So um, th from that follows that if you change something on the appliance, if you create a new file or change a file, it's always done in the slash rw file system. So let's, let's, for example, try out. We create a new file in the etc directory. Um, yeah, so the file etc hello is actually physically created in the mount point uh, rw and etc hello. So you see that file exists now and the slash ro is unchanged. Right. So now, for example, you can delete it again. Simply delete the file etc hello and it's gone. Uh, now let's make a second example. Uh, let's modify an existing file. For example, in the etc, there's a file paper size, which is totally useless for us uh, because um, we won't print anything. But let's assume we need a change. We change that to some different format, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't matter the uh, content. So we have copied, uh, we have created a, a new version of the file. So um, as you now can see, the file exists two times, once in RO and once in uh, RW. And if we look at the contents, at the two files, you, you will see that in the RO directory, we still have the original content. So the question is now, when you want to go back to the original version of the file, what should you do? Uh, sorry, you have you have mixed up the the, the path. Right. Yeah. E w. Yeah. ETC. Paper so size. you have the original change. content in the first file, and the second file we have the new content. Right. So if we want to go back to the original content, uh, the correct way is not to edit the file again, but simply to remove this overlay file. So we remove the R W E T C paper size. Don't forget the R W. If we remove the overlay file, the original file pops up again. Yeah. So we have rolled back our change in a very clean way. Why, right. is it, why is it important to roll it back in a clean way? It might be the case that a new appliance firmware update brings its own new version of the file. So if you just re-edit that file and your overlay file uh, stays lying around, you won't get the change from the firmware. So if you re really want to be clean and want to roll back your changes, uh, remove the file in the overlay file system, in the RW, and you're, you're fine here. Right. So that, that's something you need to know. Also, deletion is, is a special case, which is interesting. If you now delete ETC paper uh, size, it can be a mistake or it can be on purpose. Uh, the now the problem is in RW you cannot delete it is you cannot undelete etc paper right <laughs> right <laughs> so if you look the the file won't exist but the overlay file system creates um, a dummy file no it's, it's we just have deleted it it's it's away but if I have a look at uh, 
the rwetc directory and look for a file beginning with dot. Uh, press tab a couple of times. You see we have a uh, wh.paper size. That's basically the information that the file has deleted. Right. So if you delete the deletion file, um, the original file will pop up again. We delete the deletion. Yeah. So that's the correct way to bring. So as you can see, something very strange is happening here. Uh, the file is shown in the directory listing, but it's not present. Right. So that's uh, due to the caching of this uh, layered file system. Yeah. So in the special case of deletion, uh, you might need uh, actually to reboot the appliance. So that's it's right. a last resort of restoring files that you have deleted. By accident. By yeah. accident. So that's a way to come back to the original state without reinstalling the whole appliance. Yeah, exactly. So All right. to summarize, use the root access wisely. It can be useful, um, but unless you really need it, unless you know what you're doing, Right. Don't try this at home or yeah. how you would do it. And re <laughs> remember, with great power comes great responsibility. That's it. Goodbye. See you next time.